राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 गुरु ब्रह्मा गु देव महेश्वरा तस्म श्री गुरुव नम तस्म श्री गुरुव नम राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 जाना मूलम गुरु मूर्ति पूजा मूलम गुरु परम मंत्रूल गुरु वाक्य मोक्षूल गुरु कृपा मोक्षूल गुरु कृपा राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री 
ram 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 shri ram 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 shri ram 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 Shri Ram 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 Greetings everyone. Uh, good afternoon. For some of you I should say good evening. It's, uh, some of you, it might be the middle of the night, um, but thank you for joining me, joining us, and uh, it's really good to be gathered with you once again. I just want to share some thoughts. Um, yesterday, I was I was uh, having a conversation, a chat with a good friend of mine uh, who does a lot of prayers, English prayers, and she shares them with people and sometimes even customizes them for different people's uh, particular issues. And I asked her, you know, when you're saying God, when you're saying Lord, what are you imagining? What, how are you imagining that? And she, she responded quite readily. She said, well, you know, first, First, first and foremost, I, I think of Jesus, and secondly, I think of Mary, and thirdly, I think of this light that is in front of me, behind me, to the sides of me, above me, below me, and inside of me. And uh, she's, a, she's a Christian, and, um, you know, I thought that was very beautiful. And then later, when I was home and I was thinking about it, I was, I was thinking, well, how do I, when I say, think of God, what am I actually imagining? Of course, it's different, you know, with many different kirtans, I'll, I'll uh, sort of bring in the element of that deity. But in general, when I'm praying, or, you know, yeah, praying, uh, I guess, first and foremost, I, I think of my guru, Maharaji. Uh, second, but not second in importance, but probably second in my... Um, mind. Uh, I'll think of my spiritual mother, Siddhi Ma, who's also my guru. And then thirdly, I think of my mantra, this mantra, Ram, Ram, Ram. And but then I, my internal conversation continued. It's like, well, am I singing to Lord Ram of the Ramayana, he who destroyed the demons, the husband of Sita? And I realized, no, it's, it's, it's a little, it's not exactly that. It's more the word itself, the word. You know, again, back to my friend who I was talking to yesterday, she, you know, she talked about the Bible, and the beginning was the word. And, and that's how I feel about mantra in general, but specifically about this mantra, Ram, which Maharaji gave me, not just me personally, but I f felt like he gave that to everyone, and he and personally, yes. Um, and so the mantra itself is the form. It's not like the signifier of a form. The mantra is God. It is goddess. Um, and that's one of the, you know, one of the most amazing things about chanting mantras, and particularly, you know, like in my case, chanting mantras for kirtan. Because we're, yes, we're calling to the divine 
And yes, we're expressing our emotions and releasing and, uh, you know, opening ourselves. Yes, and yes, and yes, we are sitting with community and, and sharing our, our, our communal heart. But on the other hand, we're not doing very much at all because the mantra is doing it all. The mantra is the deity. And this is something that, uh, this, I'm, I'm, I only speak of my own thoughts, my own opinions, my own experiences. It's not something that I would you know, push on anyone else. But so for me, it, took, it, it was a while, you know, several decades before I was able to really relax into that awareness that I don't have to do much. The mantra is doing it. I have to be present as much as possible, which is <laughs> not that present, but you know, I do my best. And, um, you know, and then I do my craft, which is the playing and the singing, and trust that my guru, my mother, and the mantra does whatever needs to be done and not what I think needs to be done because, well, I have all kinds of thoughts, but I, I oh, I pray to have more faith and, uh, and knowledge that they do what needs to be done. It's, it's, it's my guru's responsibility. It's my spiritual mother's responsibility. And it's the mantra's responsibility. That might sound kind of weird and overly demanding, but that's the way I feel. And uh, Maharaji, regarding this mantra, Ram, he often said, you know, when you chant the name of Ram, the impossible becomes possible. All things are possible as we chant the name of Ram. And he would, um, you know, some of you have heard me speak of him before. And, you know, Maharaji, I'm talking about Neem Karoli Baba, my guru. He would be engaged in like 10 different conversations at, simultaneously, you know, with different people. And then he, you know, would often then suddenly become really quiet. And you could see that his, his he was just turning inward. And, and the energy would change very much. It was like, being in front of Mount Kailash, the, the holiest of the great Himalayan mountains. And his mouth would be moving ever so slightly. It looked like he was chewing gum, but he was saying, Ram, Ram. I'm going to lean into the microphone. Ram, 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 Ram. And then, you know, that would happen for a while, and then the conversations would, would begin anew. So let's go back to the chant that, that I was just singing and, and sing it for a little bit longer. Ram, 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 Shri Ram. Shri uh, is a word that invokes the goddess, the divine mother. So in a way, Shri Ram is the same way as saying Sita Ram, Shri Ram. Shri is, is the divine mother. We would know. Sing it with me. 
राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री राम 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 श्री 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 राम 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 श्री राम 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 
राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम राम So many times I get emails from people saying, um, you know, for example, uh, the live stream cure time you did on July 20th, 2021, the second song you sang was so amazing. Can you tell me where I can find that recorded? <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, what? How on earth can I remember what song that was? Uh, sometimes I try to find it and I usually can't find it. But so I wanted to share just that this Ram 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 is uh, on my album Roots Rock Rama. And the title of it, well, it's Sri Ram, but it but it's we turned it into an, an acronym. I think that's what you call it. 
supersonic rescue intervention. That's SRI, SRI, supersonic rescue intervention, radiant atomic mantra, R-A-M, RAM, supersonic rescue intervention, radiant atomic mantra. And how true that is, well, first of all, we need, we, meaning this earth, we need some rescue, supersonic rescue intervention, because it doesn't le seem like we're, we're pulling out of the abyss on our own. So I'm reaching my hand up and say, intervene, please. And, and perhaps the, the method of intervention, perhaps, is this radiant atomic mantra, radiant atomic mantra, Ram, supersonic rescue intervention, radiant atomic mantra. It's hard for, for uh, to write on a playlist <laughs> or for people to say, but there you have it, Sri Ram. Um, also wanted to tell you, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, our upcoming online Kirtan camp, but before even going into that, I want to share that that is one of the songs that we teach in the Kirtan camp, both on harmonium and guitar. I don't teach the exact finger pa picking pattern, but I teach the chords and the, the shape of the chords. So, um, you know, I, it makes me so happy when I know that people around the world are singing um, uh, the chants that I've, well, I, I didn't come up with the words, obviously, but the, the Kirtan melodies that I come up with and, you know, one time, well, this was quite a few years ago, but I went to Israel. I was invited to to perform at a festival called the Shantipi Festival. It was the first time I went to Israel, and uh, this was a, a festival of peace, uh, Palestinian and Israeli peace. And uh, the band that I was playing with, the name of the band was Sheva, which means seven, seven members. There was Palestinians and Israelis in the band, um, uh, people of the Islamic faith and people of the Jewish faith, invoking God together, invoking communal spirit together. Um, oh yeah, so what, what I was starting to say, I almost lost my train of thought, was that I was in this big tent and I, 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 I was singing, I, I began to sing some of the kirtans. This was some of the kirtans from my album, Beggars and Saints. And there was 2,500 people in the tent. It was, it was a big tent. And, and really within the first two lines of my song, everybody started singing. They all knew the melodies. They all knew the chants. And I can't tell you how, how happy that made me that, that people from, from such a far away place were de deriving such you know, heart pleasure from uh, the melodies that I that I was singing, so you know that that brought us you know years later back into this idea of kirtan camps, where I was able to share on one hand just you know my experiences, my my stumbles, my falls, my my uh, rescues, <laughs> you know the highs and lows of of the the life and the bhakti journey with others. Uh, and the beauty of that is that, you know, so, so people hear me saying things such as, wow, it's been so hard for me to, to actually sing in front of people because my inner critic is so madly screaming at me. And people think, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. You know, that's, that's part of the joy for all of us sharing, um, you know, our humanity and, the cracks in our vase, so to speak, uh, you know, not just sharing the, the, the shining brilliance, but sharing like the really the, the broken and healed and broken and healed and broken and healed truths of our hearts. So that's one thing. And then the other thing was, um, is, was and is being able to share the melodies and, and how I play them. And, you know, even down to the specifics of how, what my fingers do in the harmonium. And the, 
at first I was resistant. I just, just wanted us all to dive into devotion. But then people said, no, we want to learn how to, how to play these songs. And I don't know why I was resistant. So I immediately kind of changed gears and, and started sharing the, the craft as well as the heart. Because the craft, the craft, whatever level we're on, you know, we don't have to be any great level as musicians, but whatever level we're on, that craft supports the practice of the heart, which is um, practice of devotion, the practice of chanting mantras, the practice of doing japa, repeating mantras, the pra the, just simply the practice of trying to live a heart-based life. Easier said than done, but these practices help. And so um, thus was born our kirtan camps. And we did them for many, many, many years. And then the pandemic came and was we had a, uh, you know, the lockdown was in March 2020. And we had a, a summer kirtan camp planned uh, in person in, in our town, Fairfax, California. So we didn't know what to do. And Nubia, who is the source of pretty much all of my ideas, maybe not my melodies, but everything else, uh, suggested let's, let's do an online camp. And as usual, I, I was a little resistant. It was hard, actually, to think about how was I going to organize my own spontaneous mind into an actual course. But we worked on it. And, it, um, you, you know, and I, 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 we, we created it, created it. And, and when we ran the, the online course for the first time, this was level one, it was so beautiful. And I was so, I, I was so proud that we had put it together. And, and I felt really good about the way that we put it together. And I was so moved and touched by all the people who attended, attended online and how close we became as a community and, and how really helpful and valuable it was for people in that period. And then um, we decided to do a second level, which was just more, but a little bit more, you know, like the, the chants, the songs, the melodies were a little bit more tricky, a little more complicated, shall we say. And um, there were more stories. I won't say the stories were more complicated, but they were just different stories and different experiences. And, and um, Ex more exploration of singing, and particularly the Indian practices and I concepts of singing um, sargam, which is the notes of the scale, and introduction to ragas, and etc., etc., etc. So, well, the reason I'm saying this all is because we're we're running another, um, shall I say, version of our online kirtan camp starting in October. And we're calling it the full experience. We're, we're going to have many, many live sessions, in-person sessions, as well as level one and level two. Well, all the details you can find out. Uh, um, I'm, I, I guess Ratika, I'm pretty sure Ratika will be sharing the link for all the details and all the information. And, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm still personally, well, I'm going on my first travel this coming week. I'm going to Omega in upstate New York. I haven't traveled out of the Bay Area since March 8th, 2020. And, you know, I, I still am holding the online world as being very, very, very precious. And as I uh, tiptoeing into the in-person world, I know many people are fully in in person in life. and. Others of us, like myself, aren't. And, um, you know, I'm in my 70s, and I'm just a little bit more cautious. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's my, just my own journey. I'm, I'm, I'm a little anxious about this trip east. Uh, but, yeah, I knew that I know that I need to do some in that direction and, and some in this direction. So I'm really happy we're doing the online uh, camp again. I call it camp. You know, some people call that a course. But in my mind, we're all camping out together uh, in in some Himalayan can cantonment. Uh, anyway, um, I, I was wondering if there was any questions, and that, not necessarily questions about Kirtan Camp, but any questions about anything. Um, 
I don't necessarily have answers to all the questions, but you know, it's so beautiful to to just kind of speak just what's in our mind and our hearts and and I can respond. Okay, so, I'm gonna read a question that we have. Um, okay, great. Well, Ratika, introduce yourself. This is Ratika speaking. Hi, everyone. My name is Ratika, and I help Jai and Nubia um, with many aspects of running the online course. Um, and if you also have any questions around the course or anything um, covered today, feel free to reach out to me at support at jayotal.com. Um, so the first question is, um, earlier you were speaking a little bit about um, a heart-based life, and can you share more about what it means to you to live a heart-based life? And then also a second part of that is how do the practices in the course um, help us to kind of orientate in that direction? Well, it, it seems that, that most of the world, at least, at least let's say the, the Western world, um, lives, people live their lives um, from the point of view of their minds and their intellects and, try, you know, first of all, trying to figure stuff out and act accordingly. And in most cases, in many cases, uh, with with the this sense of I being the of the most primal importance, you know, how, what am I doing in this world? How am I making my mark? And um, you know, it's not necessarily. I'm not saying that's evil or bad or anything. Well, then it, it can easily tumble into what can I get? How can I get it? And how can I get it before other people get it? But but you know, that's that's the dark side. But it's it's moving from a mental um, viewpoint, which in and of itself for, forgets uh, the the complete interconnectedness of all humanity. And when we try, and I and I'm I honestly, you know, for me, just as much as for anyone, it's this, I'm just trying my best. But the intention is to not not. Um, get rid of the mind, not get rid of the intellect, certainly not get rid of the ego, but have it sit a little behind the, the realm of caring emotions and sometimes very vulnerable emotions, you know, not always comfortable emotions, but feeling, you know, the realm of feeling automatically makes us empaths, makes us feel for the others and makes us feel how our actions affect the others and the people around us. And, you know, um, every, I feel that everything that we do is like a pebble thrown into a, a, a lake and ripples outward. And when we, when we live our life, at least with the intention of, of seeing the world through our hearts and seeing th the world through our, our deep emotions and, and our shallow emotions, all the deep, shallow, what does that mean? Just all the feelings that, that reside in the hearts. Uh, it in, engenders compassion and it, and it engenders really a lot more care in what we do and how we do it and what we say and how we say it. Um, we all stumble, you know, there's no question about that. But it, but just the little inkling of, of will the next thing I, what's going to, be the actual, real, visceral effect of my next action. How will it make this person close to me feel? Um, I don't also think, well, what it, how it'll make me feel, but maybe the how will it make me feel is a secondary intention where, where the how will it make him or her feel becomes more of a priority. Um, and, you know, that can manifest as, as doing great deeds in the world, you know, and it can man manifest as simply trying our best to be kind to the closest ones around us. And, you know, it can, every person's journey through life is completely different and every per person's way of manifesting a heart-based life is, is different. But I think 
the the um, the, the essence is the same. And so, how do the practices of kirtan and devotion and bhakti, the things that we explore in the camp, but also just the things that we do as part of our lives, how does that help us live a heart-based life? Well, because these practices are all about awakening, enlivening, and putting more spirit and more energy into our hearts. And in our hearts and out of our hearts simultaneously, you know, like moving inside to who and what we are and what dwells within us at the same time as like when we sing, you know, that energy is going outward. Um, when we learn the craft of, of playing harmonium, playing guitar, there's, there's definitely times when we really got to think about it and the technical things. Um, and that's fabulous. There's 10,000 things we could be thinking about that might, <laughs> might be less fabulous. But um, the, the practice itself, once we get past the technical things, it's a completely heart-opening, um, emotion-inspiring, devotion-inspiring, community-inspiring, global, collective, inspiring practice, the practice of bhakti. So then, you know, when we're not singing, when we're not um, doing these things and we're just doing our daily life, there's, there's more energy. Um, gradually, 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 there's more, more of our energy comes from this place than this place. And once again, I want to reiterate, it's not that this place is bad. We need our minds, we need our intellects, we need our egos. It's part of who we are in this incarnation. Uh, I, I just think that they can not even take a back seat, just maybe take the passenger seat. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. They take the passenger seat, but the heart is the driver. Thank you. So we have a few other questions. Um, and also before I read this next question, I just wanted to remind everybody, if you have a question, um, there's a place on your Zoom menu that says Q&A. And so if you just put it there, I'll be able to see it and read it. So you just go um, to about third, third over um, from the right side of your screen on the Zoom menu for Q&A. So the next question is, do we need to have a guitar or harmonium for the level one Kirtan camp or the level two Kirtan camp? No, uh, we, we don't. Um, it's fun if you have a harmonium and, uh, or you want to get a used old broken down harmonium and, and begin to learn it. I, I think that's really a fun thing to do. But really, the, the, the first and foremost expression is the voice. And um, the instruments, at least the way I approach the instruments, is as, as a vehicle to, to support the voice. And, you know, we don't need that. Um, we can just clap. We can just, uh, sometimes I sing and I just go like this or just sing. Um, I, 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 I do show everybody how to use this great app on, on iPhones and iPads called iTabla, which, which you can f create a drone that's very supportive for singing. And, and to tell you the truth, most of the time, most mornings, not every morning, but most mornings, uh, make my coffee or Nubia sometimes will make my coffee for me and I'll sit in my comfy chair and I'll turn on the drone on my iPad and just sing with that for half hour, 40 minutes. And um, yeah, it's, it's so, well, what's the word? It's so nurturing. So no, you don't need a harmonium. You don't need a guitar. Um, I do some songs on the banjo but you don't need a banjo. <laughs> you don't need to play an instrument. And really, you don't need to have any musical knowledge whatsoever. Uh, and I give, I share some musical knowledge with, with even the most beginners. And I, then I, I feel, and I encourage people to, to kind of welcome this sort of headspace that as soon as you sing a note of prayer, um, whether you're playing an instrument or not, but just even if it's just one note, you are, from that point on, you are a devotional musician because um, you're making music and it's devotional. And, um, you know, you, we're using mantras and singing these mantras and invoking, well, I'll say being visited by the energy that exists in the mantras as well as the, the, the voices and the energies of thousands of people through the millennia who have, um, chanted these mantras and have chanted them with all the deepest, deepest 
feelings that exist in human beings. Um, so yeah, that's my answer. You, you don't need a harmonium, you don't need a guitar. Thank you. Um, and we just had a question in response to what you just said that is, uh, where do I get a broken down harmonium? Um, and one <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good question. It, uh, first of all, uh, I don't know where you live. So the first thing would be do, to do would, you know, check on local, like Craigslist is, is every area, let, tell me if, if I, I'm not a Craigslist guy, but people talk to me about Craigslist. Uh, doesn't every area have its own kind of Craigslist where you can look and see locally for things for sale? Yeah, um, most do. Yeah. And then you can also Google Harmonium for sale. And then you say, you know, it'll usually say near me. And then um, we will off, uh, we also offer resources. In fact, uh, there's no reason not to put that in the chat, I guess. Um, at this point, or maybe we, we can wait, I guess, um, of places where you can get harmoniums and um, order them. It's quite, it's quite easy to get a harmonium. I, I don't know if it's as easy to get a nice broken down old harmonium, but um, I think it's, it's very doable with a little searching. S especially cities that have a, a larger Indian population. Thank you. And I will go ahead and post um, some of the resources um, in the Q&A section for harmoniums. Um, you, Rachel, a, yeah. sure. Great. And we had another question come in. Um, how far into practicing harmonium did you start coming up with your own melodies? Oh, that's a great question. Well, I started coming up with my own melodies before I even was played harmonium. Um, you know, my the very the very first instrument that I that I studied was piano when I was little. I I, I you know I, I think I started when I was six. So I, I never was adept, became a great pianist, but I, I got a sense of um, of the keys and and where notes were and stuff. And then my second, really my first love was banjo. Um, and then I started studying. Well, then I learned guitar. I mean, so, you know, it's a long course. When I finally got to Ali Akbar Khan and the, his school of classical Indian music. I, I had played a lot of music already. I was 19 at that time. And, and I knew where the notes were on the keyboard. So when I started trying to play harmonium and accompanying myself with chanting, you know, I was new to the, to the instrument itself, you know, the, the actual physical pumping, playing aspect of the instrument, that was new, but I knew where the notes were. And, and so, so just kind of like figuring out simple melodies and making simple melodies up and also playing melodies that I was learning as well as the raga melodies that I w was being taught by Ali Akbar Khan. It came easy to me and it was sort of natural. That being said, no one needs to feel that they need to make up melodies. There are so mel many melodies in this world, and there's been so many melodies from time immemorial that we can learn and and you know kind of make them our own as we sing them and sing them and sing them. So the goal isn't necessarily to get to a place of making up melodies. It's it's fun to make up melodies if that comes natural to you. And I know for many people it does, and for many people it doesn't. And um, one is not better than the others. We, we, are, we are the recipients of so many gifts from the ancient people. And one of those gifts is, and not just the ancient people, you know, <laughs> there's so many melodies for us to listen to and learn and enjoy. But anyway, that that was that was how it was for me. It was kind of from the beginning. I was making up melodies. I, I just kind of liked to, and and gradually, I began to you know forget so many melodies. I forgot more melodies. I just forgot so many melodies that, and on the spot in kirtans and groups, I would have to make up a melody because there was moments where for the life of me I couldn't think of a single melody that I knew. It's, it's kind of funny, but it's true. Thank you. So we have a few other questions. Um, for someone not musically inclined, can we actually learn how to play the harmonium? I've been trying to learn, but I have no experience with reading or playing music. 
help. <laughs> uh, you, for starters, um, when I teach the harmonium, you don't need to read. Uh, as we get into it, it's it's helpful, but but we don't do it with Western music. We do it with Indian notation, which is so 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 much simpler. But we leave that for for a moment. Um, and I recall, you know, when I was studying with Ali Akbar Khan, I was studying it in, as well as vocals. I was studying an instrument called the sarod. The sarod is a stringed instrument. It's got twenty five strings, and it doesn't have any frets in the in the way that a violin doesn't have any frets. It's a big metal. Key, uh, fingerboard, uh, sh um, uh, what's that word? Uh, stainless steel, and um, and you play it with the backs of your nails sliding along the the stainless steel fingerboard. So there's no indication of where the notes are, um, and you had to do it entirely by ear. So we got into it, me and my fellow classmates, and some of us can find the notes, but there was one fellow who called himself completely t tone deaf and not musically inclined. Now that, that was his frame, f phrase. But I, 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 the second phrase, and you used that, not mus musically inclined, I, I just don't believe it because first of all, everyone, mo no, I won't say everyone, but most everyone loves music and is touched by music. And you, um, you're trying to play harmonium so obviously you are musically inclined. Inclined meaning means leaning. Um, so you're leaning towards music. It might not come exactly easy, but you, but the, inc the inclination is there. So then the second phrase you didn't use it, but but this um, friend did that he was tone deaf, deaf and couldn't hear the pitches, couldn't dis make any distinction between the pitches, and. What Ali Akbar Khan did for him, and I'd never seen him do this for anybody else, is he took a marker, an uh, indelible marker, and, and wrote on the instrument the frets, you know, where the pitches were. And so this friend who quote unquote was tone deaf could see where his fingers should go. Now gradually, as he learned to play by this, um, you know, seeing and then gradually by feeling the distances, his ear became more and more and more tu uh, tuned. And now he, he's, he's older than me, he's an older guy, but he plays, not but, and he plays so beautifully and so in pitch and tune and what, what happened to tone deaf? To, uh, it's just some of us have a little bit more, you know, maybe it's the, the family that we're born into. We hear more music, there's, more music around and, and people are focused more on music. I don't know really why that, why or why not. Some of us have a difficult time hearing the pitch and this just totally, te totally teachable and totally trainable and develop, you know, it develops so naturally without pushing, you know, you can't push that kind of thing, but it's like, um, I can't f find the analogy right now, but but it, it, it just grows in us. So you, wh whoever you are who asked that question, we start with just a so simple accord that, that, and I show you exactly which fingers go on which notes, and we hold it, and then we sing it, and then as we sing the melody, I show you a second chord and exactly how to move your fingers to it, and then very quickly you know your first chant. And um, you don't have to know anything about music. You don't have to have any theoretical understanding. And then gradually, I, I, I hope that I do it in a very gentle and accessible way. Most people say that that's the case. Um, then I share some simple th theoretical understandings of music, which I think are very valuable. Um, they're not valuable for everyone. But, but I teach them because they've been very valuable for me. I hope that helps. Thank you. And we have another question. As a Maharaji devotee, do you see him as the backbone of your chanting practice? Yes. As a devotee of Maharaji, Neem Kroli Baba, I see him as the backbone of my chanting practice. And I see him and experience him as the backbone of my whole 
incarnation of my life. Um, and uh, that doesn't mean that there's my, this part of my life and then there's this Maharaji part of my life. Because uh, I feel that, well, it's the backbone, it's the spine. It supports all, every aspect of life, my life. Maharaji and Sudhima are, are the, the, yeah, the support of every aspect of my life. And we have another question is, what is the most important thing that you think people will learn from either the level one or level two or the full experience um, online Kirtan camp? The most important, well, I couldn't say the most important because everybody, you know, gets a different thing out of, out of, out of everything. But often I feel, in a, you know, I felt in our in-person Kirtan camps and now in our online camp that the, if there is one most important thing, it is how to begin and then nurture each one's own personal practice of bhakti, personal practice of the practices of bhakti. And in this case, particularly chanting mantras and chanting and, and doing kirtan. I so, so much believe, and, and it is hard to get everyone else to believe, but I guess this is to me the most important, that, that each one of us has everything, completely everything we need to begin and to continue through our lives, our, our practice of kirtan, our practice of bhakti. And, you know, people, humans, me included, we have a lot of resistance to that. That can't be true. I don't have a good voice. That can't be true. I don't play harmonium. That can't be true. I, I, I am not spiritually inclined. <laughs> that, that can't be true. I'm in a bad mood all the time. That can't be true. I have to go to work. Um, and I keep saying over and over and over, it is true. Yeah, we're all super busy, um, but we can always find three minutes in a day where we can sit down or stand up uh, and sing or mutter or groan or sh scream a simple mantra um, and you know water the seed of, of uh, divine connection inside of our hearts and um, yeah that's so I would say that's the most important thing. And the rest is, that that's the most important thing that I can convey as Jai. The rest is, you know, as I said before, it's in, it's in the divine hands. But that's what I, what I find really important. I, I don't know what's the most important thing that each person would get. But if I have a message, quote unquote, <laughs> that's my most important thing, that we can all do this. And then we begin to see how our lives change. Thank you. And we had a question about um, earlier, you were speaking about the storytelling in the course. Can you speak a little bit about the um, importance of storytelling in bhakti and also a little bit about um, what you go into in, in the course? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. These all, all have been great questions. So thank you all so much. Um, in bhakti yoga, there, there are many individual practices and, and singing kirtan, repeating mantra with beads or without beads, japa practice, uh, cooking. There's, so, there's so, so many. And one of the primary ones is, is telling stories of the divine beings, of their uh, adventures on Earth, their adventures on other planets, as well as telling the, the stories of the, the great saints, you know, the, the men and women who have Whoa, what's the word, have touched so deeply into, into the world of spirit and the world of, uh, uh, and have invoked so deeply the essence of, of compassion. You know, these stories are, are, are like mantras. And, and so the storytelling tra tradition is not just in India, it's not just in Bhakti. The storytelling, yeah, I'm blundering my words. The storytelling tradition is very, very important in all the ancient 
um, cultures. And it, it's a way of passing on, well, just the energy of, of our ancestors and of, of the divine beings. I see the telling of the story, like the, the story that I'm most immersed in myself is, is the Ramayana, the story of Rama, Sita, Hanuman, and all the other great great beings who inhabit that story. I, I see telling as well as listening to that story a, a different form of, of mantra. The story itself is a mantra. And in the sharing of it, um, whether, whether, whether you know whether it's me telling it, or you listening to it, or you telling it and me listening to it, it it's an invocation, uh, effortless and and full of s excitement and suspense and mystery and romance, but uh, that that brings forth the divine spirit and and you know in, in the case of the Ramayana, it brings forth the energy of Rama and Sita and Hanuman, Hanuman the monkey god. When we hear stories about him, you know I don't know it, it just even sometimes saying his name. It's just so inspirational to us as far as how to live our life and just like without, you know, not even mentally, just like our hearts, we know we're not without support because Hanuman is here. Um, yeah, so I, I love to tell the stories and, and in Kirtan camp, I tell the whole Ramayana. I also tell stories about Radha and Krishna, about Shiva, and each of the stories you know, I'm not making them up, but they're, they've been passed on from centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries. I put my little spin on them, the same way as when I create a melody, I put my little spin on it. Um, but the, the essence of the stories is, is, is the same as the essence of the mantras. They, they, they are filled with divine energy. They are divine energy. And then I also share, this is on the very other side of the coin, I do also share stories of my own experiences and some of the things that have happened to me and that I've gone through in my life. And this is uh, to help inspire, and as I said a little earlier, to, to help people know that, you know, there, we're, nobody is alone in, in facing the challenges that we all face in human life. And, you know how sometimes we can help each other view these challenges from a different perspective or if not we can tell each other how much we care um, and that in and of itself is so valuable thank you and we ha we have another question um can we call in maharaji even though we've not met him in the body Uh, I want to preface my answer by saying that I am never proselytizing for my guru. I would never, ever do that. Um, so, I said that, and now <laughs> I'll answer the question. Uh, my experience since Maharaji left his body, or, or the, put it this way, the experiences that I've seen, so many people have have found a deep connection to Maharaji who never met him in the body. And at first, when I first came back from India, that that particular trip, and people would tell me this, I was a little skeptical. You know, I, I said, I had a dream of Maharaji and he came to me and my life has changed. And I was like, I said, how, how could that be? But when you start hearing that thousands and thousands of times, you realize, I realize that my conception of what and who the guru is was very limited and that the great ones, and in this case, speaking about Maharaji, are not limited to their, to their mortal bodies. And we who were, were with him in the body had a particular karma. Uh, I'm, I'm super grateful and super like just, wow. Thank you. But other people have a, a, a trajectory, a life tra trajectory and a karma that, that allows them to meet Maharaji or other great masters, uh, men and women, uh, on a different plane. And so, yes, if you're called to, if your inner voice is telling you to call to Maharaji, 
there should be no question like, oh, I didn't meet him in the body, so I have no right to, to call to him or to try to connect with him. So, and likewise, you know, if that's Jesus or if that's Mary or if that's Ananda Maima, um, if it's the master of the Amazon rainforest, uh, you know, who, whatever great being your heart and soul is drawn to, if that happens, you, yeah, you just go with that because the inner guru is, is, is directing our, our every step. I think that, that, you know, we have just a, a short time left. Let's, let's sing another song on, unless there's like something like absolutely crazy. You gotta ask it. Uh, that was actually all the questions for now. Oh, that's so awesome. And and uh, before I go, go into the, the chant, I, I want to just say thank you, all of you, for being so present. And they all, each and every one of those questions was like, if I was going to write a, um, you know, a list of things that I wanted to talk about, each one of those questions w would have been right there on the list. And, and thank you for conveying them, Ratika. And, and my beloved Nubia, I'm thanking you in advance, is right here and supporting me and supporting us. Wow. I can't imagine. I won't even go there, but just thank you, thank you, thank you. So, I'm going to sing a melody with you that is actually the second chant that I sing, that I teach in level one. Um, the mantra is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Um, and there's so much I can talk about that mantra. I just can speak about that mantra, but but I, I will save that because we don't have that much time. Let's let's just sing it and. Uh, you know, we don't, uh, I won't do call and response. It's still one of the failings of Zoom technology is that we can't actually sing together in, in, in real time. But, uh, you know, we see that as a challenge and, and we work with it. So I'm just going to sing and then uh, join me as soon as you feel comfortable with the melody. And yeah, so I, I like this, I love this, and it's fun just to know. That, that anyone who comes to level one will learn this in the first month, I think. Unless I, I might be remembering that wrong, but it's certainly in the first course. Uh, yeah. Now we're doing. I do it in a different key in our Kirtan camp, but I'll, I'm going to sing it this way. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yeah, now that I remember, I think it's maybe the third or fourth one that I teach. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare. 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देव महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम जानूल गुरुमूर्ति पूजा मूल गुरु परम मंत्रूल गुरुवाक मोक्षूल गुरु कृपा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम 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 हरे हरे ओ
Thank you all so much. Thank you, Ratika. Thank you, Nubia. Uh, thank you, all the saints and sages from time immemorial. Thank you, Maharaji. Thank you, Sidima. Thank you, God. Ciao. <laughs>